Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eugene. Uh, Alex is one of my closest friends from the Academy, and I'm so excited to be here to speak on his behalf and share some of the great memories I have of him uh, that really capture who he is as a friend, a companion, and then someone who would drive over to my house at any time to make frozen pizzas with me and my wife, Claire. Um, at some point, I think I might have been able to say that I was Alex's favorite person, but I think Jason, Jojo, Eric, and Hunter might also have been able to claim that title at some point. Um, but after Alex met Erin, that spot was officially reserved only for her. Uh, and it's been awesome to see them grow together over the years and be friends with both of them. Full disclosure though, y'all kind of been scammed a little bit. Like, they've actually been married for a year already. I know it was already said, so. <laughs> this is more of like an anniversary than a, like a wedding, but you know, we're here to celebrate with them. Um, but congratulations to Aaron for being the second luckiest girl in the world. Shout out to my wife, Claire. Woo -hoo. Uh, but I, wouldn't, I won't be able to share every memory I have of Alex, and I know a lot of his high school friends are here, and they have some crazy stories about Alex that I'm definitely not going to be able to tell, but I'll try to keep it PG so you guys won't hear anything about him, you know, almost sinking the boat or all the ragers they used to throw at the lake house. I'll try to keep it mostly PG. Uh, and share some of the stories from the Academy that made us close friends. Um, so I met Alex freshman year at the Coast Guard Academy. We were both in football, so we met at football practice. Um, Alex and Eric, one of the other groomsmen, were roommates at the time. And a little backstory: Eric and I were terrible at basically all the science classes. So chemistry, physics, we did awful, yeah. <laughs> I think I got a 31 on the first chemistry test. I thought I was failing out for sure. Uh, so us not being very good at basically all academics. We had Alex as a friend, and if you know Alex, you basically know he's a super nerd. He's a genius, he's good at all things academics. Um, and with that being so, he basically tutored us before every single exam we had the night before, and a lot of the stuff he tried to explain to us, it was a lot more complicated than me and, Alec, or me and Eric were able to understand, and to him, I'm sure it was pretty simple, but for us, we had no idea what the heck he was telling us. So we left those study sessions a lot of time probably more confused than when we showed up. Uh, but if there was one thing I did learn from those study sessions, it was that I needed to be out of his room by 10 o'clock p.m. every single time we studied because he needed his eight hours of beauty sleep. <laughs> so I don't know if something changed between high school and college, but you had to get out of his room by 10. And if anybody was in his room, if anybody was making any noise, if Eric so much as coughed after 10, Alex was not afraid to yell at anybody to make sure they would get out. So just keep that in mind, Aaron. Uh, sophomore year, we continued to grow closer through football and within our friend group. And at one point, we took a trip to New York City just on a long weekend to hang out. Uh, and full disclosure, we were definitely all 21 for this trip. Uh, while waiting to get into a bar, we realized we hadn't eaten in several hours. And when we didn't get in, not because we weren't 21, but for some other reason, uh, we decided to go get some food. And we did a uh, 11 p.m. Mickey D's run and decided to order 50 cheeseburgers from the dollar menu. Um, that essentially shut down the McDonald's for about 30 minutes. And everybody in there was extremely mad at us. Uh, it's one of my favorite memories. Um, junior year was also special in many different ways. And I learned a really important lesson about Alex during junior year and it was that he gets stressed out from the weirdest things. Like, this dude's ace in the ACT, got like a 32 on the ACT, destroying all his EE classes, and then some random little things happen and this guy doesn't know what to do. So, the, the, the best example I have of this is, we were over in Germany when we were uh, enjoying spring break. This is like right in the height of COVID, so this had just started to pop off. They made us come back. My dad was able to get us flights back, first class. And I almost got arrested going through security. Yeah, shout out, Dad. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I almost got arrested going through security, but we finally made it on the plane. And it became apparent three seconds on to being in the plane that, Air, that Alex was, had no idea what to do with everything that they had given him in first class. He didn't know how to deal with the luxury of first class. He'd never done it before, apparently. And the flight attendant was just trying to get us to sit down. And Eric, or Alex proceeded to look at his seat with all the blankets and the pillows, I think it was two pillows and three blankets, and just look at the flight attendant and say, I'm just so overwhelmed. <laughs> she then had to remind him how to sit down and do his seatbelt, and then she then gossiped with Eric and Hunter, who were on the other side of first class, for the rest of the plane ride home. Uh, 
So that's another lesson. So, so far we have beauty sleep. He needs his eight hours. He likes late night snacks. And don't do more than two pillows and two blankets because it's going to overwhelm him. <laughs> uh, senior year, which is my favorite year, and I'm sure that's probably most people's favorite year. But we took a lot of camping trips. There was a lot of restrictions at the academy due to COVID. So it was kind of our way of getting away from the academy, Chase Hall, uh, and forget about the stress of school. We listened to a lot of Zach Bryan and Tyler Childers, ate a lot of s'mores. Uh, but most importantly, Alex started a very special relationship with a gas station frying pan. Um, long story short, Alex was very convinced that he'd be able to find a frying pan at a gas station. And Claire didn't think so. And for some reason, Alex was like certain he could find one. And surprisingly, he did. So he was very excited and he walked out of the gas station with a frying pan over his head. And I can't share what he said next. And if you were there, for the story, please don't share this with anyone, ever. But he had only known Claire for like a very short period of time, so what he said would probably be at least mildly concerning in the least. Um, but it was really fun, and Aaron, I'm, I'm sorry you had to uh, witness that. So lesson four, he's gonna gloat if he's, if he's right, so maybe just don't let him be right. Um, but through all this, I was lucky enough to spend time with Alex and become great friends. I know we'll be friends for a very long time, and I cherish all the memories that I've made with him. Uh, you're one of the most loyal and kind-hearted people I've ever met, and I'm humbled to be your best man, and Aaron is very lucky. Uh, I, I saw a co cool quote while I was trying to figure out what to say for this speech, and it said, love does not consist in, in gazing at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction. I know Aaron and Alex are looking in the same direction, and I know they will find their greatest happiness in each other and the life they, they create together. Uh, cheers to many years of happiness. So Eugene wrote a book, and I did not. <laughs> I was underprepared. Uh, but my name's Caitlin. I'm Aaron's sister, and we are eight years apart. And so, you know, growing up, there was a little bit of an age difference. She and Taylor were a little bit more into the same things. I was not as much. But <laughs> when, when Erin was growing up, she just epitomized joy. She was always happy. She always looked for the best in things. She was the kid that was the ambassador for the new students that came in, which I think Lauren, she was your <laughs> ambassador when Lauren moved to Heber. But she was the kid that they knew would make anyone feel welcome and anyone feel at home. And so we've always been a little protective of Erin. Taylor and I say, like, if there's a burning building, and one of the other siblings is in there, we're both going for Erin. Like, she's the one we're saving because she's just so good and she's just so happy. And so when she went off to the Coast Guard Academy and she hadn't really dated in high school, we were like, oh, this is gonna be rough. We can't protect her anymore, you know? She's gotta go out on her own. And I remember when um, she started dating Alex, mom called Veronica and was like, Veronica, I need details on this guy. Like, what, what are we gonna do? You know, like, I don't know anything about him. And she goes, Miss Kathleen, he is the nicest person ever. Everyone on the academy says, like, he's so nice. And they say the same thing about Aaron. And it's just so funny that the two of the nicest people, apparently, <laughs> at the academy, I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> but two of the nicest people have found each other, have the same birthday, fell in love, and we get to be here to celebrate them. And so we just wanted to say thank you guys for coming and celebrating them. We're so happy for you guys. And before I cry, <laughs> say congratulations to Aaron and Alex.